students, would you? Perfect. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, hi, everyone. How are you getting on? For those of you who haven't been at some of the, the previous meetings, my name is Rory and I'm the Welfare Officer for the Students' Union here in UCD. So uh, thanks very much, uh, Stephen, for having us uh, here to, to speak on it. So uh, I'd just like to thank Stephen for facilitating this uh, group of talks. They've been going very well so far and we've had some fantastic speakers over the last few weeks uh, touching on a, a quite a number of uh, very important topics relating to uh, medicinal cannabis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've touched on the Dying with Dignity Bill and, and other important things like that as well. Uh, so we're delighted to have uh, Kenny here this evening. Uh, I know Kenny's done a lot of work with the, the cancer uh, side of, of, of this as well. And I know Kenny was a people for profit representative. So we're, we're delighted to have you here, Kenny, to give your take on it and uh, provide us with your expertise. Uh, I, I won't keep uh, you for too long, but the, the format of this evening, I, uh, Stephen might go into more, but we will have a Q&A section at the end. So if anyone has any burning questions they'd like to ask Stephen or Kenny, we'll be able to facilitate that. Uh, thanks very much again. And I, I'll hand it to Stephen if that's all right. Cheers, Rory. <clears throat> Fantastic. And uh, yeah, welcome, welcome everybody. I hope you can all hear me. And uh, like Rory said there, if you have any uh, questions or anything, uh, comments, then uh, we have a Q&A. If you pop it into the chat, uh, we'll have a Q&A afterwards. And um, uh, uh, we'll both be able to look at look at the questions then. Um, so uh, tonight is about is a big topic. It's about cancer and medical cannabis, and it's still an unfolding area, to be honest. And but one that has is proven to have real, real uh, things, real, real results going on, particularly with different types of cancers being matched to certain strains, and that that appears to be the the key. So. Um, I've got it. I, I, I've been fielding, I don't know if you're following me on, on social media or anything like that, but I have been putting out a, a little video of a lady in America who has been, uh, who has, who kind of hits the, hits the, hits the, all the points that we're going to need to cover tonight. So I, I edited it down very rough. I'm not, I'm not a, a, a qualified editor or anything. So I edited it down to, uh, it's a five minute video. So I'm going to uh, just share the screen for a second and uh, we'll uh, play that. Now, I'll never do this fluently, unfortunately. That's uh, <laughs> desktop. I think it's in here. Can you talk edit? That looks like it. So can everybody see that? Thumbs up. We've also got reactions on the bottom here. On the bottom of the thing, you can put, your <laughs> put a thumb, give it, there you go. Good enough. So, um, so I'm just going to watch this. It's five minutes, but it, it, it hits a lot of the notes that we're going to hit tonight. And it's got a, a very famous doctor. Uh, that's the, he was the kind of guru uh, from the Israeli uh, Institute of Technology uh, called Dr. Miele. And he's, uh, he's a guy right at the cutting edge of this. So just it's a five minute thing. Well, a little bit over five minutes. So uh, just sit back for a second and take this in. I promise you it's all true. And you hear that. I have Can I get a I thumbs up it. if you're hearing that? Around the Can years. Maybe you've guessed. I'm treating my cancer with cannabis, and this is my story. So here's my recent surgery. It was laparoscopic, which I was really thrilled about. There was cancer in my gallbladder, the lymph nodes right up by my pancreas, and there was some small tumors that weren't in lymph nodes. So I have a lot of involvement up here. Michelle uh, called us from Oxford, where uh, she was at the time, and told us that she had to go to the emergency room for pain in her pelvis. And we thought it was just a twisted ovarian cyst. But the CT scan and others warned us that this was a much more ominous diagnosis and as soon she had major surgery and removal of an ovarian tumor that was metastatic throughout her abdomen. When Michelle has been a number of cases where cannabis has been shown or at least has been suspected to be uh, effective in controlling some of the genitourinary type cancers. If Bill hadn't suggested that I try it, initially just for sleep and to relieve what I call disease anxiety. 
I probably never would have started. And if I hadn't taken the lower doses and seen some changes in my tumor growth, I never would have tried the really high dose regimen and seen my tumor shrink. I make my own chocolates because I like to use uh, the chocolates to control my insomnia and, and muscle spasms and, and whatnot. I grow the cannabis myself in a fungicide and pesticide free environment and use that to make an extract with coconut oil. And the coconut oil is then mixed with delicious Belgian chocolate and uh, vanilla and then dosed out and stored in the fridge. Cannabis can be helpful in treating a wide range of ailments, including epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, and pain, to name a few. But why is this unique plant so effective in the treatment of so many disorders? Science points to the endocannabinoid system, or ECS. Only discovered in 1988, the ECS is a cell signaling system made up of receptors placed throughout the body. The ECS maintains homeostasis, it does this by creating cannabinoids, such as anandamide, vital compounds that regulate almost every bodily function. If the body fails to produce enough of its own cannabinoids, compounds found in the cannabis plant, known as phytocannabinoids, can supplement the ECS and restore balance. With more than 500 compounds identified in cannabis, each individual cannabinoid has its own effect on the body. For example, THC has been shown in preclinical studies to kill several types of cancer cells. It also reduces pain and is a neural protectant. Thanks to Bill's chocolates, I was sleeping better, but I needed to talk to an expert, someone familiar with the endocannabinoid system and its ability to heal the body. How often are you using cannabis? Oh, every day. But how often during the day? Oh, just at night. I am a Western trained physician. I graduated from the University of Washington. Part of it goes back to being the son of a pharmacist and working in my father's drugstore for 12 years when I was an adolescent and young adult. I was aware that the basis of pharmacy is plant-based medicine. And I had my father's 1927 Remington textbook of pharmacy at page 999 and 1000 and tells you how to make tincture of cannabis and that it's useful in treating pain and anxiety. I am talking about stuff that was used by the Chinese in the 26th century BC that was used in Arabic medicine in the 17th century BC that was in the United States pharmacopoeia from 1854 to 1972 and was the third most common ingredient in prescriptions and patent medicines after alcohol and opium at the turn of the 19th to the 20th century. Technology published a groundbreaking paper highlighting the success of specific strains of cannabis impacting a variety of cancers. I think it is. It seems to be really powerful. On the cancer research, we find from the beginning that there is a specificity between the type of the extract that we're using, the type of the strain that we're choosing, that its ability to kill the cancer cells. We find out that strain number one is attacking colon cancer, but doing nothing to prostate cancer or to liver cancer. And, and strain number two, extract number two, will kill just the prostate cancer, but will do nothing to colon and to breast. So now we will screen many, many types of cannabis, and we will try to find a specific <coughs> one that will kill just this cell with this mutation. This is the way we're trying to approach it now. So I think we have to go all in on this cannabis. So that's, uh, let me just stop the share. So that's a little bit of a, a background to everything, to be honest, because it's got, I feel it's got all the elements. It's got, uh, this is something like my own story, which is a kind of one of uh, self-medical advocacy that took my uh, uh, discovery of that, uh, that my, my diagnosis of MS led me to uh, a treatment in Russia 
HSCT. And I can say definitively that I'm not in a wheelchair today because of that. And I have continued throughout all these years to uh, medicate with, with cannabis. So it, it is absolutely working for my MS. We, we, we talked about that in, for, in, the first, in the first case. But to me, one of the critical uh, takeaways from that is this is a self-medical advocacy story. This is a lady who, uh, what's, what was his name? Bill, the, the neighbor, uh, actually knows how to grow, grow some plants. And uh, so Bill is there just on the far side of the wire, finds out his neighbor has, uh, has, um, uh, has cancer and uh, decides, Bill is uh, self-medicating for, what did he say, insomnia and anxiety, and it's working for him. And uh, look, at these aren't criminals. I think everybody would agree, Bill and, and uh, Denise, I think, is, is that her name? And uh, so it's like, uh, this is people finding their own, their own path and, uh, and in the end, finding a very, very effective one. But what for me, it really enhances is uh, in terms of activism going forward, that uh, the right to grow is absolutely manifested in, in, this, in this lady's story, because that's how she found her solution. And, uh, and ultimately uh, that she's got her, uh, she's, she's able to treat her cancer and she's uh, putting herself into remission. So that's just a little background that hits a lot, I think hits a lot of the notes that we, that we, that we have in this concern of cancer and medcana. Uh, listening to Dr. Mary at the, and at the last section there, uh, it's obviously still very much uh, uh, something of discovery because of this idea that specific, it's like it is kind of crazy that a specific strain of cannabis can lend itself uh, to specific types of cancers. He said something that works for prostate doesn't work for colon cancer. It's something they're all kind of each strain. And so uh, it takes, we need a lot of research, continuing research uh, to, get, to get past that. And Israel is right at the forefront of it. And tonight we have a man that should be part of the study uh, and want to wel welcome our guest tonight. Uh, he's a legend. He's uh, the man with the Cannabis Patients podcast, if anybody ever checks it out on, uh, on, uh, on all, all the local, usual podcast uh, platforms like Spotify, uh, Ucast, I don't know where it is, but it's, it's everywhere. And uh, Kenny is, um, is a legend in his own right in, uh, in, in, in Ireland in terms of his activism and all of that. But in the end, he is a cannabis, is like the podcast says, he is a cannabis patient. And he's leading his own, he's leading his own story and making his own story. And so uh, I'd like to give everybody, you can, you can go to the reactions and make a round of applause there and welcome Kenny Tynan to the show tonight. I'm going to call it a show. <laughs> How are you doing, Kenny? Thanks very much for having me on, um, uh, Stephen. Uh, great to be here this evening. Yeah. And uh, you have some amazing news. And I didn't want to uh, throw it out in the introduction, but I'll let, I'll let you do that because you have a, yours is a very active situation, Kenny, yeah? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Um, I just got a, a scan uh, there last week and um, I got the results back a day later. And um, it was shown that um, it's the tumor itself has um, sh shrunk again. So oh, that's, it's, uh, it's stable and it's continuing to shrink, so it is, yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Hmm. And can you give us a bit of background about your about your story? Like, um, I know a little bit myself about how you kind of uh, you uh, went to Spain in the beginning at the very start of your podcast. You kind of do a couple of podcasts on on your trips to Spain. But when did you when did your when did your cancer story begin and move towards can cannabis? I was um, diagnosed in 2015 after uh, I took a seizure while doing a gig and um, they told me that uh, I had a grade two glioma in the brain and I went for surgery in Beaumont to get it taken out and then I was uh, diagnosed with a recurrence not soon after and um, they got it they got 100% of it out but uh, it came back anyway but um, that was the time that I decided to uh, uh, get treated with uh, cannabis and I, I spoke to uh, a uh, few consultants uh, about it, and they weren't having any anything about it. They just wanted to uh, 
um, treat it what, what they thought was best with uh, chemo and radiotherapy, you know? And uh, I said, no, um, I was just after losing my mother uh, to uh, uh, small cell lung and liver cancer that year as well. And I seen what chemo put her through. And uh, that was how, how um, naive I was at the time. Like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, as you, as you said, there, um, there's no two cancers that are alike and there's no two people that, you know, uh, experience the same kind of things with cancer, you know, um, being it's so complex. Like, and uh, so I went to, uh, I got onto Vera Toomey and she was, uh, she was after telling me about this place in Spain called the Calapa Clinic. And I got in contact with them done a consultation and I, uh, I was over then for three months in Spain uh, taking uh, their prescribed uh, cannabis medicine. And um, for that, those three months, um, I noticed a, a secondary effect that uh, I was able to come down off a lot of prescribed medication and um, I was uh, seizure free for those three months as well. Like, you know, so um, when I came back then uh, we, uh, we started campaigning and then for uh, my license and um, I continued to get it shipped from Spain to a friend and uh, uh, one, uh, one day in April then um, I got a love letter from the customs and uh, they told me that it's, uh, they've, they've uh, confiscated 50 grams of cannabis resin and I uh, got onto the phone to them and I said uh, no that's my medicine it's 50 mils of 10% THC and you want to get put that down right in the letter if, you, if, you're, if you're going to prosecute me because I'm going to fight for a bit for it back and uh, what happened after that then was there was a big protest in that loan then with over 500 people at it um, looking for it back and uh, well we didn't we never got it back <laughs> but uh, I got me license eventually and um, but I wasn't getting um, it uh, wasn't getting a refund at the start, but uh, they did start refunding me under um, the uh, the treatment abroad scheme. And then last February, when I um, when I put my name forward for uh, uh, general election, uh, just by coincidence, they suddenly stopped it. They suddenly stopped the funding, and, and you know I've I've given up on the license route now at this stage. Um, uh, I've been making my own here in the house. And uh, I've been getting on well with that. That's a question. Like, how is your how is your delivery always? Has it always been oils or? Uh... Yeah, well, I, I I'm a talker as well. Like, you know, I'm like uh, I I I I smoke, the, and um, I do I do the oils as well. Like, you know, um, but I I find that um, the oil is much much better uh, at, at keeping you stable for much longer. You know, um, like uh the the intensity of the cannabis dosage is much much higher when it's uh you know it's inhaled or vaporized or that like you know but um it doesn't last as long as it stays uh, it gives about an hour and a half of an effect i think um but um the oils uh stay in the system for much longer like a couple of hours at a go like you know and uh so that keeps me level like you know and uh keeps the seizures at bay you know sure and uh no, and because you also have a secondary kind of issue with the uh, epilepsy, no, that uh, that keeps under control uh, your cannabis. Yeah, well, I'm proud to say that I'm nearly two years seizure free now at this stage, um, well done. and that's all. That's all down to cannabis. So it is, you know. Um, and uh, as I said, I was I've been able to come off other uh, medications as well. That was, uh, you know, I was been getting for. Uh, seizures and epilepsy as well like you know yeah. you're a success story man and uh, we're uh, we we should be so proud to have you in ireland and you should be uh, you know like, like i'm not going to say studied but you know and uh, you shouldn't be uh, further frustrated which is a, an ongoing thing no it's like you said that you're not inclined to continue your license which is a shocking thing i mean that's supposed it was supposed to be the holy grail we were all told about uh, how to sort sort ourselves out. Yeah. No? It's it's no good to anybody if they can't afford it. Yeah. And I I managed to do fundraising for a while. I even started up the, the podcast there as a way of fundraising. And uh, it you know people were great at the uh, at the start or when I did look for money, 
but it kind of felt like I was begging the whole time, you know, and uh, it's it's not nice uh, to be constantly fundraising. So I said, here, look, I'll start up the podcast and see how that goes. And maybe that would be um, uh, that would be a way of generating uh, funds for it, like, you know, but that never materialized either. So um, uh, so I, I just I couldn't afford it. And the last time when they asked me, did I want to order? I, I just told him no not until I'm, I'm stopping now I'm not ordering until you can uh, cover for me because we're I'm the rest this, we're hearing this every week now and uh, because we had like last week we had Alicia and Miriam and uh, so they have the they have life they have licenses as well and uh, but like Alicia is going that uh, I, when when she goes back to Ireland because she's out here in Spain able to kind of get uh, get what she needs cheap in in dispensaries and uh but when she goes back she's going to be facing uh like i think it's two grand and what she said two grand a month or something like that or two th every three months like to be two grand so you face a big bill like that essentially to keep your um, thing at pay. my my one was four thousand every three months that was before flights or accommodation like you know because i used to go over and pick it up as well like you know and uh you would, you could go over there and it mightn't be ready for you. So, you know, you want to stay that night, you know, or two nights just to be sure, like, you know, and um, like it, it's an, it's an 18 hour round trip, you know, if you, if you were to do it all in the one day, so you would want to be staying there as well, like, you know, so, and and so you're talking, come on. Yeah, like I enjoyed it. I'm not, not going to lie. I, I did enjoy it. I love I love the Netherlands and I love the Hague itself, like you know. But um, I can see how it would become a pain in the arse for somebody, you know, um, having to travel over and back to whole time. Yeah, uh, I think Vera. She actually got a bit of noise today in the in the doll. Finally, after much uh, like there's so, like this is while we're here talking here tonight, there has been some real uh, amazing work going on. In the last days, with uh, Tom Curran's, uh, he's got his a uh, uh, council, his um, medical cannabis council, medicinal cannabis council, and uh, a bunch of actions happening all over the place. And it's great to see that whole hashtag uh, talk to Vera. You know, it's really it's like pulling teeth to get uh, to make make moves in this situation. So. Yeah, it is totally yeah. Yeah, um, it's great to see the, the mental council come on board as well. And uh, uh, we've been working on things in the background as well um, and like getting a little booklet out there as well, you know, about uh, the, the patient stories and how the laws in the country are adversely affecting people like myself, you know. Um, like, I, I can't afford to keep up uh, this bill either, like, you know, so I'm going to end up having to grow eventually, like, you know, and that's what we need to start looking at is, you know, patients um, being able to grow themselves. Like, Well, that was one of the points of, uh, I really wanted to get out there in that uh, little video. It's a little five minute thing. So, but what the, the point is that that lady was able to, uh, with, the, with the help of her friend, who's a, he's an experienced kind of grower or whatever kind, but it doesn't matter. It's the right to grow. I'm here in Barcelona, I can grow four plants. And uh, so if I find the strain that I, that works for me, then I can just I can grow it, and uh, I'm I'm kind of friends with a guy called Shanti Baba, who'd be one of the the, the top seed men in the world, and uh, so he literally has seeds with all kinds of it's this he has seeds one to one seeds that like that are that is the same essentially as Sativex, which cost I, I hear Sativex costs two hundred fifty pounds. Uh, a month in the UK. I'm not entirely sure about that, but I believe people are complaining that it's too expensive for them. And uh, so, I mean, what you can grow, I mean, uh, with seeds, come on, it's a plant. And fundamentally, uh, if people, if patients are being so denied because uh, they're not allowed to grow, and now we're all kind of, it feels like we're all sitting here uh, bracing ourselves for big pharma to decide uh, to lobby strong and decide how it's going to how it's going to pan out. What's your view, uh, Kenny, on like what you could see? Uh, what your what's your big ob objective? Do you think? Um, well, I'd like to see uh, all uh, consumers of cannabis, like because it's not going to go away. People aren't going to stop consuming cannabis just because it, it's uh, 
it's illegal. It's a problem that is, is going to be here. So we might as well make it safe for them. So we need to have a safe product for everybody, for starters, you know, for all consumers. Um, a tested product that, uh, you know, that, 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 that's gone through rigorous testing to see what, uh, what dosage it is, like what percentage THC is in it. And, uh, you know, um, uh, I'd like to see people ha having the right to grow as well, because, um, you know, not everybody can uh, afford the medicine as is. And, uh, you know, people without medical cards will have to pay for it as well, like, you know, so um, I, I, I think that you, sh you, you shouldn't be at the um, hands of the big pharma companies. I think it should be a more grassroots movement. Um, patients first, you know, um, as opposed to profits. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it is a situation where, where we, we have our, uh, just across the, the water, we have uh, the UK has the, their situation, let's say, is developing faster than ours in, this, in, a, in a sense. But again, it seems that all I hear is people complaining about that the patients are not able to afford uh, what they can do. But I think in the end, and like Kenny, like you're saying, you, can, you could grow your own. Would you estimate what would cost you to, to medicate yourself as opposed to the... Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, it would take 20 plants, so 20 ounces basically per year for, to, to make my medicine. So, per year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, and I do it here. I have done it here in, uh, two weeks ago, and uh, I made my first batch of uh, hemp-infused uh, cannabis oil. And I met it with a little fryer. So I did a little deep fat fryer that I could set at uh, 130 there. And I, I put in my hemp oil and I round up my cannabis and put it in there and let it soak for a while at uh, the temperature and um, took it out, strained it. And it's as good as, if not better than the last one that I was, was using, the Bedrocat. From, from, from the Hague. Yeah, yeah, because it was an Indica uh, that I was using. And it, it, the... Uh, the um, bedrocan is a uh, sativa, so you, you can't use it late in the evening or you'd be up all night with it, like, you know, and you'd be, you know, you wouldn't get tired, like, you know, you, you wouldn't sleep until three or four in the morning if you took it late in the evening, you know, so, like this Alicia, one. Alicia was complaining about this exact, making this exact point. Uh, mm -hmm. She suffers from chronic pain and she's saying that this is the sativa and the, and the, what she has available to her is uh, it's it's exciting her nerves if nothing else and oh, yeah. exacerbating the pain so it's this is the real issue it's the difficult one i think kenny because there it is such a layered uh, layered uh, kind of idea uh, the different strains the different uh, needs every patient is almost like an individual case and uh, so do you feel you're very much trial and error to find you found your your way now is that would that be correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, I don't think that um, uh, that the strain that I was on um, was uh, doing much for uh, the actual tumor itself. Right. Because you know, you know, I've been on it for so long. It, it's probably just helped with the. You know, I've gone through chemo as well and, and radiation in the last year, and uh, I haven't had any side effects from that at all. Um, I lost a bit of hair during the radiation, all right, but uh, other than that, not a thing. You would think that I was 100% healthy. I, I even ran for, I even, you know, went for the general election when I was undergoing chemo, like, you know, and, and walked around the country and, you know, uh, knocked on a few doors, like, you know, so. Um, Stuck a few hands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah but um, uh, what was I saying there again? Uh, well, you're just you're kind of saying that uh, uh, your energy energy levels are good. I think is it you're and you're able you're able to do you're able to kind of commit to doing a thing like uh, like running for election, which is no easy thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it it was great. Like uh, altogether, um, I was expecting. You know, when I first turned down chemo and that, um, uh, it was because I seen what it had done to my man. But uh, my uh, neurosurgeon. He was constantly on to me about it. He says, look, you're so young now and uh, you've got your health about you. And uh, I think you now would be the time to uh, do it. You know, if you're ever going to do it, you know, now would be the time to. 
And I was saying, look, I, I, you know, I'd rather hold off as a last resort, like, you know. And he says, well, this could be, this could add a, add a few years onto your life. So, um, uh, I, I, I agreed to sign up to it, like, you know. And um, why was I wrong about the entire thing, like, you know? And cannabis helped me through it, like, I was. You know, I was able to come up to my full dose of uh, 150 milligrams of both CBD and THC a day uh, while I was in St. Luke's um, because I didn't have an, any other uh, thing to, to, to distract me, like kids or anything like that. Sure. So I was able, uh, as much of it into me as, as, as I could, like, you know. And um, it was the same then for the six months that I was taken to chemo as well. I was, uh, well, I was under 150 mils or the 150 milligrams of both THC and CBD a day. But uh, since the chemo and since the good news, I've reduced that down as well. So I have, uh, I think um, I was on uh, 50 milligrams of each per day. So I've heard of what I was doing and I was still getting, um, I still haven't taken a seizure and I've not had a headache or been weak or anything like that, you know, ever since like. I mean, it's quite extraordinary, man, and it's a great, it's a great, you're a great story, and it's great that we have uh, you kind of there as somebody to point to and go, well, that's, you know, it's working out. Uh, I mean, at, this, at the end of the day, nobody's, nobody's claiming a cure, Every, but it, convent, and conventional medicine has a place. Like you said, you still do your chemo, and there's many people who, uh, you know, while, they're, while they do and go through the kind of uh, conventional uh, route medicine, and do the chemo and do the different things. I did chemo for my for my thing. This is new hair. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> but I, uh, you don't look too close, so you see a lot of scalp. <laughs> so I keep the hats on mostly. But uh, it's it you know these are we we do conventional uh, medicine, but this is also helps you when you're when you're doing the chemo. I mean you have uh, I know. Um, comedian you have comedian ben morgan there he's like he's he's one of these who uh, he tells his story of um how he um he you know he's he struggled with weight keeping the weight up during the thing so people doing uh, doing chemo doing traditional uh, roots they they can still uh, use cannabis to kind of get their appetite rolling and making sure that they're healthy while they're taking while they're taking the the chemo well, I, I always managed to uh, keep weight. I was always in around uh, 100 kilograms uh, throughout uh, the chemo, and I was eating well as well. And uh, my um, bloods were always 100%. So, to, you know, that, that's what they were mostly worried about. Was, uh, it was my white blood cells, and they were always 100%. Yeah. So you're resilient. So you also uh, you went you've taken it a bit a step further and you've gone and educated yourself like myself. This is what you do when suddenly when when this stuff knocks on your door. I went off and I did a bit of study in the University of Colorado Boulder, and you went to uh, study with this Institute of uh, um, Institute of uh, Technology. Is it in 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 Israel? That's right. Yeah. Um, I, I just seen this course online and. Um, uh, it uh, came with a cert that you could share on LinkedIn, um, and uh, it seemed like uh, a lot of people were getting employment from it, like you know. And uh, so I uh, decided to do that course. Uh, it's just a certificate course, um, but uh, wow, did it open my mind to it and explained an awful lot as well, like you know. Um, it didn't just cover, uh, you know, uh, cancer. It just, you know, it was, it was more about. Um, uh, pain management and uh, types of pain and how cannabis can affect pain but it, you can apply that to all types of uh, disorders in the body like you know a lot of disorders come from inflammation and you know and broken uh, pathways and uh, your neuropathic pathways like you know so um, with the anti-inflammatory and the, uh, the signal shut off from the THC it you know, it makes perfect sense that uh, it, it can be used. Sure. I mean, I'm I'm a nerve pain dude. I mean, the the MS is uh, it, it's in the kind of uh, it's in the uh, what do you call it the MCAP program, 
uh, mainly on spasticity grounds. But to be honest, uh, I don't have an issue with spasticity, but I have a real issue with nerve pain. I will get, uh, you know, if I'm doing too much walking or doing too, doing too much, when I do too much walking, my limit is one kilometer. But uh, it's like after a day of, of, of something like that, then I'd struggle to sleep uh, with nerve pain. So absolutely, this is a, and the key is while, while CBD obviously has good value, it's a good cannabino cannabinoid, uh, but really THC, when you go into areas like we're talking here of uh, cancers and, and, and pain management, then it's the THC is the, is the kicker, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's it's true. Um, like they're both working in, in synergy with one another. Like the entourage effect. That's basically what it is. Like you know, um, I think uh, the guy in Spain in the clap clinic uh, said to me like that. You know, I asked him, did I need the CBD as well as the THC? Because I had heard that it was high THC oils that you needed. You know, uh, from the Rick Simpson method. You know, you've all heard of our soul, like in the Rick Simpson yeah. oil and run from the cure and that. You know. So I said to him, do, do, do I need the CBD? And he says, let me put it this way. He says, the THC is like the scrubber and the CBD is what washes it away. So that was a good good enough analogy for me, like, you know, so. For a, Span for a Spaniard as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like, they are, I, got, I did this, I did a, a, there's another clinic here in, in Barcelona as well. There's, that's Calapa's one and there's another one, MedCan. And I did a, I did a, a appointment there a long long time ago and uh, it's the, the same thing we have to look for our sweet spot between CBD and THC and you find it kind of by, by a trial and error and unfortunately uh, because of the barriers put up there around surrounding THC it's almost like you can't talk about that and that's uh, and that's one of the real struggles I believe. So, um, anything uh, you'd like to con uh, conclude with, Kenny? In the, do you want to? Is your podcast still going? Um, it's not going as much. Um, I uh, do one every couple of weeks now at this stage. So I do. Um, just when I feel about feel about talking about something, you know, yes. because. Uh, I, I think that um, if you don't have anything to say, you, you, you better keep your mouth shut. Like, you know, I should look like a fool, you know? So um, there's there's plenty of other people that are out there covering the news on cannabis. So um, that's all that I get. I, I told my story, so. There you and, go. And, unless something else comes up, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to bother with it. I My head stuck into um, the study you now, and I'm going to do a diploma course on medicinal cannabis as well. Like you know, so eventually, I, I, I you know, I'd, you know, it's a view to become uh, kind of a consultant, if anything, like really, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I'm involved in a project with UCD Innovation Academy where we're going to try and set up a, 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 med a medical cannabis clinic, which is a patient-led clinic, which is exactly that. It's about because we're the kind of people who can share real lived stories and, uh, and people can kind of, uh, you know, access th these kinds of stories, but not to, to, to give you a break, to give me a break, to give the, pa the patients a break. So I'm trying to design it in a certain way that we don't have to keep telling, we don't, I never set out to become Mr. Mr. MS or Captain MS or, you know, Mr. HSCT, but that's somehow we are, where we end up. And, uh, and it, but it comes back every now and again. Uh, it comes back through frustration for me, Kenny, where um, I will have, uh, there's people, I know people out in, uh, out in Fuerteventura, I know people all over Spain that are there as kind of uh, economic, or not economic, <laughs> medical mi uh, migrants. And, uh, and this, this, this is shocking that they're, they're kind of, uh, they're, they're forced into these situations. And uh, so you kind of feel then that that's it's you kind of have a responsibility because you can and you're able to do this. You're able to make a few things happen that you can kind of keep doing it. And uh, so if, and but I think we're beginning to find our feet as in the patients in in, in Ireland to, to gather ourselves into a coherent uh, um, true actions like this and true uh, the, the council that Tom has set up. And I feel that we're beginning to find uh, find a coherent way, and hopefully, 2021 we'll all be we'll all be dovetailing into the one the ones the one thing. So, uh, 
I don't know, Johnny. I, I think uh, I think that's certainly all I have to say. Kenny, do you want to add anything while you're, uh, the spotlight's on you? And we go to some Q&A then, I guess? I know. I think we could go to Q&A now. So, I think I've covered everything. You know, if anybody has any questions, fire them uh, up there in the Q&A and and I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. So, Perfect. Thanks very much, Kenny. That's that's great. I might read out a few of them if uh, if that suits you. I'll just fly through them. Uh, great. great topic so far. So, um, should I start up at the start? So, a question from Cleena Mannion. Uh, this is a question for Kenny. Do, do you have an Irish doctor, and what's their response to your tumour shrinking now? Well, I have an Irish doctor, all right. Um, I'm under a, a, a team of consultants. Um, you know, a multidisciplinary team uh, of radiologists and uh, uh, chemo and uh, neurosurgeons and um, uh, also an epilepsy uh, doctor as well. And they're all uh, stunned. They're all very happy for me. Um, the results like, you know, um, as my own GP actually told me that uh, um, I'm a trailblazer, you know, so. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. It's great to hear us. Um, we have a question from, from Linda Dilmer. Uh, did they know that uh, in St. Luke's you were taking medical cannabis and did they support us? Um, originally, I was admitted to the ward in St. Luke's because of my epilepsy. And um, uh, as you know, they have a lodge uh, of or on the campus itself where people can go and they don't necessarily have to be um, admitted to the hospital, but they can go and get the radio treatment you know from the same grounds like you know but they tried to keep me in the hospital because um of my epilepsy and uh, when they asked me about uh, what uh, medicines i was on i took them all out and uh, i showed them the metal cannabis and they wanted to get a look at it and uh, i said no no that's mine i said so um and they said we want to, we only want to take a look at it to see if we can uh, prescribe it to you and I said, no, no, I have enough here to do me for the time being, like I'm grand, you know. And I said, no, no, when, while you're in here, we have to prescribe it to you. And uh, <laughs> that's when they came to a, a halt, you know, um, so because the doctor came over and he says, look, um, I, can't, I can't prescribe it to you uh, because I'm not licensed to prescribe it to you. So when you're here, you're, you won't be able to use it, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, right, I, I took that as an excuse. I was delighted. You know, I said, I'm getting out of this radiotherapy now. Because <laughs> I did at the time, you know, I was freaked about it, like, you know, I, I didn't know if my head was going to explode from it or whatever, like, you know. So um, they eventually uh, turned around and says, right, we'll put you down in the lodge, but you, but you have to uh, have someone staying with you. So that's what I've done for the six weeks is I had friends stay with me um, down the lodge, which was great. Like, you know, was, that was like a holiday camp, really. So it was, you know, you were down uh, for your 15 minutes um, down to get the radio treatment done. And then you'd the rest of it yourself in the beautiful rack air. <laughs> so it was great altogether. <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, another question from, from Linda. Uh, could you, in theory, go to Barcelona for a holiday and visit a cannabis clinic there for diagnostics or prescription? Or do you need to be a resident and already under the care of a GP? I'm not sure if that's for Stephen or for Kenny. Well, I could take sure. that. Maybe. We'll give Stephen, yeah. I could take that maybe because that's what we're, that's what I'm putting in place. That we're, we're, this clinic idea that, I ha that I've been working on and we're going to do is that you will be able to kind of, uh, we can hook you up remotely with, uh, uh, with, with doctors that have been prescribing here for 20 years. Barcelona is quite a, quite a, a developed scene. It's been around for a long, long time. The right to grow has been there for as long as I came to Barcelona in 2002. And even in 2002, you could grow, you could grow plants. And so the, the manif uh, it manifested itself about in 2011, uh, I was actually, I had Howard Marks, the great, the legendary Howard Marks. I'm, I'm a comedy promoter. And so I had uh, Howard Marks in, in Barcelona for a couple of gigs. I see Johnny Keenan on, on, the, on the call here. Johnny helped sort that out. And, uh, but uh, after, after the, in 2011, uh, after we did the gig, uh, Howard got an invitation to go to, uh, um, to go to the, the Spanibus, which is a 30 year old uh, professional cannabis fair. I think it's the oldest in the world, is, has been here for 30 years. And uh, so we got invited to go to the inauguration of, a, of what, I, what was, to my knowledge, the first, uh, the first cannabis club. And uh, so that's 2011. 
So it's been around and developing here for quite a while. And I'm I'm a member of, you know, five clubs around the town. When you get to know them, you get to know well what's what what works, you know, who's selling what you need in terms of vapes or in terms of oils or in terms of dabs. It's famous for for dabs in the in the kind of technical sense. Barcelona is kind of seen as the cutting edge of, of all of that. But they uh, in within the clinic. Uh, like uh, the guy that we introduced that I was with with uh, Howard Marks that night is a character called Shanti Baba, and Shanti is uh, one of the he is the one of the world's uh, absolute premier. He's a guy Scott from uh, from Australia. He's one of the world's premier seed men, and and bio, he's a biologist, and uh, and so they're incredibly. Uh, I've been incredible with Barcelona, and uh, and the idea is when we launched this clinic that you can you can do. Um, uh, you can do an, do an appointment directly with an English speaking uh, ex a twenty year experienced pre prescriber. It's happening in the UK now as well. You have clinicians. It was literally another uh, webinar on tonight, so it'd be possible to hook up with uh, those UK clinicians. And uh, and to be honest, though, uh, I, I do love the idea of experience and and guys who are twenty years in this situation. My, my, my doctor here in Barcelona, the guy that I seen as part of MedCan, uh, is, is a perfect English speaker. And uh, he's, he's, he appears in The God Plant. Uh, geez, I always forget his name. His name is Estrada. And, uh, but he appears in, the, in a video of The God, or, or a documentary on uh, the, the God Plant. Do you know that documentary, Kenny? It's, it, I think it's on, uh, uh, what's the one that you get free with air? Anyway, we'll, uh, but the name of it is The God Plant, fantastic documentary. And you have Tom, Tom Curran is actually in that documentary. And you have a bunch of people that are kind of well known to the Irish uh, cannabis collect community. So I guess, yes, we'll be sorting that out if uh, to make direct appointments and to, to bring and to harness the knowledge of Shanti Baba and all his connections that's there for 30 years with cannabis. That's great, thanks very much. Uh, so the next question, just from Clean Emmanuel again, how, ma how much does a consultation cost in Spain? I'll go for that again. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's about a hundred for the hundred for the first the first one, and then it gets cheaper. So the 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 first uh, the first um, consultation I think is a hundred euros for your, for the hour, and then it, I think it comes down to seventy ninety or something something like that. Oh. Not too bad. Thank you. A uh, question from Mark McDonald: Is the sweet spot with cannabis easier to calculate with oils or material via vape? Um, I suppose I could direct that at either of you. Kenny, do you want to maybe take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, when you, you when you start taking cannabis oils or um, vapes, you're 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 always told to start uh, at a low dose. So you you work your way up to wherever you're comfortable. In my opinion. Um, I think I was over prescribed to be honest with you because I was never comfortable up at my full dose really um, uh, on, on until I was in St. Luke's and that I, I knew that I needed it like you know but uh, any other time I was I was only really taking two thirds with three quarters of, of it uh, you know every day like you know but um I think it's it's easier um to calculate it, it with oils um because the you know um oils stay in the system uh, for a lot longer. Like it, it, and when, when you're treating something like pain, you know, you always want to have a baseline. And then if, if you need to top up then, um, top up by vaping, you know, and that, that will, you know, there's a good chance that that will get rid of the pain then, you know, uh, but you need that baseline there all the time, like in my opinion, like. I'd agree. Great. Uh, thanks very much for that, Kenny. That's a very comprehensive answer. Uh, so next question is from Jen Devlin. Uh, uh, this is for Kenny again. As a father, did you, did you explain to your children about your cannabis use? Do you think it's important to teach your children about this medicine in a responsible way? Great question. Yeah, it is a great question. Yeah. And uh, I would, I, as you can see here, I have the Cannabis Patient podcast up, up, on, my, uh, up on my wall there behind me. And, um, you know, I, my kids have known that uh, they, they don't think of cannabis as a, an illegal substance, you know, to think of it as daddy's medicine, you know, and um, it is it is important for us to teach them uh, about cannabis and uh, when they're at a young age, um, because um, 
like they're, they're going to be offered it like you know um and you you got to uh, tell them that it's it's not it's not for kids like you know it's not um it, you know like it, it, there's studies that show that you know early onset use um you're you're one and a half times more uh, uh, susceptible to depression and other mental illnesses later on in life you know with it you know if you use as a team so um i think the way that i went about it is that um you know i went about it is that i was doing nothing wrong um this medicine was helping me and uh it was a special new medicine that i had to fight for and uh this you know the, the guys the boys seen me i have three boys or sorry four boys and they've, they've all seen me, you know, fighting for my medicine and, uh, you know, fighting for my life, basically. Like, so it's, uh, you know, they, they don't see it as a as a recreational thing or anything like that, like, you know. Um, so, yeah, I do think it's, it, it, it is it is a good thing to teach them about it, like, you know, as well, like, you know, um, as, as well, you know, for, the, the, like, is, you know, kids can be cruel as well at, at times as well, you know, so. You know, you want to have them, um, you know, with the proper utilities to deal with that, like, and to deal with kids, like, you know, people, people going around saying that, you know, even, you know, it's fair, you know, to, to have the uh, stereotypical view of a stoner, you know, um, your dad's a stoner, or, or this kind of crack, you know, when it's, when it's, it's a lot of it is medicine, you know. Um, I'm not saying that I don't in in the evenings spark up like you know and you know enjoy it uh, like a, like a glass of wine or whatever like you know but you know I I, I rarely drink like so that this is my uh, choice of recreational um, if you want to put it that way but um, I I don't do it around in front of me children uh, you know I don't uh, consume physical cannabis around me children like you know but they do see me take my medicine so they do uh, which comes out of a bottle and uh, it's a kind of a syringe joke that i put underneath the tongue so yeah thank you much kenny um, so next question is from john o'regan how do we fix the problem of getting access to treatments uh, that patients say works for them part of the obstacles i might uh, direct that to you first Stephen, if it's okay well, uh, I will always uh, be first and foremost uh, a right to grow because it is a plant and I kind of see that uh, a lot can come out of that kind of expression that uh, I just go back to that, that little video at the, at the start there. That was the, that lady's neighbour was able to grow cannabis and he made, he made the tinctures to put in the cookies that got her asleep and he was treating himself to treat his own insomnia. We have people, uh, we've had people on here in the last couple of weeks. We've had Tom, Tom grew to, for his partner, Marie Fleming. And uh, when she was going so badly with MS, we've had uh, Miriam and Alithia. They're all, you know, we're, if we're allowed to grow, we're allowed, we're able to treat ourselves and we can do it uh, much, uh, much cheaper than, than, a, than a pharma drug will ultimately end up being. And uh, so while I do recognize, must, I must say that uh, the kind of, and we're going to have it next week, we have Vera Toomey and we have uh, Deborah Downey with the, who are mothers of kids who need micro dosing. And it's very important for them, the level, the absolute accuracy and the levels that they administer to their kids. So there is, it, there is this kind of thing that it is a, a thing for, you know, per person. But I believe that if we have the right to grow, then patients can find what we call the sweet spot, which I see Mark is there referring to in the in the in the chat as well. So that would be my impression. The barriers, the barriers is the law. <laughs> Simply. Yeah. Excellent. It's a simple answer as you're as you're saying. So I think we have another question from uh, Kleena. Was there any other supplements you'd recommend taking alongside the CBD oil? So she's said example fish oils. Is there anything else that you see as Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I myself, I've tried everything. Um, uh, but I, you know, everything from uh, uh, herbal supplements to uh, um, liposome and uh, vitamin C to uh, wheatgrass to everything. But what I found best uh, to help me along was um, medicinal mushrooms um, like uh, reishi, chaga, and lion's mane. And the reason why I say that is because I've, I found it noticeable 
um, improvements in my cognitive, cognitive um, ability um, when I was taking them. So, but with the rest of them, I think just snake oil, to be honest with you, the, the, the push all these things as alternative cancer treatments. And, you know, but I think that a lot of them are snake oil. Um, I, I found that um, the uh, mushrooms had me a, a, with an awful lot clearer head and my chest skin went up by a hundred points. So I, I was pretty proud of that as well. <laughs> Not too bad. Um, I think we're we're kind of at the end of there. We've no other questions in the chat unless anyone else wants to ask another one. Anyone wants to jump yeah, in there? Feel free to jump in. Yeah, I had one there actually. I wouldn't mind asking. Just if you're using uh, obviously this amount of cannabis and this amount of cannabis regularly, do you ever get people questioning your mental abilities and that you use cannabis? Do you ever get people essentially discriminating against you for for using cannabis and questioning your mental abilities? Is that to myself, is it? Right. Yeah. We go ahead, Kenny. You speak that. Yeah, well, I'm I'm on it now, you know. So would you question my mental ability now? Oh no, I'm speaking. <laughs> I'm speaking more in protest towards the people that would. Oh no, I've never come across it. I've never come across it at all. Thank God. Awesome. And like I, I live in a little village in you know County Roscommon, and like, you know, um full support around here you know you, you would think it would be quite the opposite but like it's full support like the amount of people that's come, come up to me and congratulating me like you know and um i think it's changing kenny yeah big and, time. Uh, and it needs to and i think it right. is changing. i'm uh, i'm in the i'm i just finished the ucd uh, innovation academy course kenny's finished his uh, uh medicinal marijuana course from from uh, israel i've just finished one from and, and last week we had uh, Alicia Maher, uh, who's doing her PhD in decriminalizing uh, cannabis. We had uh, oh. Miriam Haskins, who is the most knowledgeable woman in, uh, in cannabis in the country and uh, was an educator in Canada for years. This nonsense and kind of it comes out of that kind of donor kind of uh, a stereotype. Yeah, stereotype. it's discriminatory. It's a view that's been told. Yeah. So we, so we have to, so that's why it's, it's, it, that's a lot of the part of this, because we're part of, this is ultimately uh, um, set up within UCDs and we're looking for the students of for sensible drugs policy to be, they're the next generation of apparently brains in the country. And so they have, like, this is about showing that, uh, you know, we're, we're not all stoners and whatever, we're not, we're, we can string a sentence together. <laughs> and uh, it's a little bit that. Brilliant, thanks, thanks very much. For answering that one as well. So I suppose I don't think we've anything else coming into the, the chat function. So we might nearly wrap it up there. So just from the students' union side, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Kenny for coming in and answering uh, the questions this evening. It's great to have you. Uh, and thanks again, as always, for Stephen for facilitating this and to Kaylee, who's working away in the background to, to run the show. So uh, unless we have anything else, uh, I think we might, uh, I might hand over to you, Stephen, to yeah, wrap up. Yeah. To wrap it up is just basically to uh, thank Kenny and to get people excited because uh, uh, Veer has been in the news again today and the doll is beginning to move on things. We have Tom's uh, council is, is coming into place and we have these talks that are going to continue up until, uh, up until uh, every Wednesday until the 9th of December and they're all valid. And so I just want you all to, if you can keep sharing it and keep driving people towards the cause, it is a cause, and uh, this is the motivation here is to create a movement between all of these things with Tom. There you go. There's the Cannabis Patient podcast promotion coming in there. You can <laughs> check that out. There's another one, Raw, raw uh, what's that one, The Skins? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I mean, it is, we, we want to build a movement. That's my motivation here. And I'm hoping that, we, uh, you know, if we can motivate as many people to realize that this is, this is valid. Med medicinal cannabis is here to stay and it's going to be you're on the wrong side of history if you don't see this if you don't if you see it as stoners if you see it as whatever this is done it's done in so many communities here in barcelona barcelona is not falling apart i don't know if anybody's been here lately but you can buy can go in, i can go down the road and buy whatever i want in the shop and uh, it's actually made a bit of a quantum leap amsterdam i lived in i lived in holland for years and uh, Amsterdam, I seen Amsterdam grow and uh, seen how it developed and, but it was always kind of dingy coffee shops and stuff like that. Barcelona kind of, because it came later, made a kind of bit of a quantum leap 
and this has got really swish coffee shops man this is, these places are beautiful you go to these places and you get i get i've got my vape here and i got different things but i'd find a complete breakdown uh, lab results everything for everything that i consume and that's how it has to be and that's where we got to get to so that's what we're going to be fighting for so th i'll thank kenny once again man we've, we've gone to our hour so we'll leave it like that and thanks, thanks a lot, guys, for coming along and keep spreading. What is a uh, stay blazed? I like Martin, <laughs> Martin Condon's law has the lines for wrapping it up. Martin, poor old Martin went to. There's Martin at one joint. Went to went to court yesterday, and Martin has put stuck his head above the parapet, and I really feel for him. He's a he's got a thing called Martin's World. I hope you all check it out. He does a 4:20 news every day at 4:20. And uh, but my God, you, you have to be brave in Ireland because we all know the police, we all know our politics, we all know how it is. And to stick your head above the parapet is something. And I think he's paying, paying for it because yesterday uh, he went to court and got fined 400 euros for an up for a joint, which was basically on a stop and search. And uh, so we can't have stop and search. We can't have targeting of people who stick their head up. And uh, this has to be a place where we where we fight for our, our our rights to speak up our rights to come out and our rights it's like these are bad laws gay marriage was a bad bad law well it became a good law but uh, you know what i mean we've had bad laws they're changing let's become a pro proper progressive society and that's what we're going to continue fighting for Is that right kenny <laughs> right big time and Cheers, more, guys. god bless take care thanks a lot thanks very much thanks everyone Ciao.